Hi, fellow Agile thinkers. It's Michael again, your favorite Agile thought provoker. I'm still on my series on team models, and today I got for you the team process model by Blendel and a few others. It was the result of a workshop on team models in the year 2001. And what they used is something similar to what is called a SIPOC uh, diagram, which they reduced to inputs, process, and outputs. And they are concerned with how does the team generate the outcomes that we are looking for. And the main thing they think about is actually the process, things like the knowledge of the team, What kind of experience do they have? What kind of skills do they have? What kind of training do they have? The leadership. How are priorities being set in the team? Who gives guidance to the team? What kind of guidance do they give? And what guidance do they get within the team? What kind of behaviors? Does a team display, for example, how do they communicate? How do they monitor their own tasks, their own progress, their own results? How do they give and receive feedback? And how do they collaborate in a sense of, uh, do we have backups if I am missing or gone for a vacation or whatever? And that is uh, how the team is able to function as a team. And the last one they have is attitude. And that's actually a big issue in some teams. Some people, they just don't care what comes out of the work of the team. They are not motivated. They don't care for the results. They are not really in it. And there could be many reasons, but that's something we might want to take a look at. And what kind of climate do we have in a team? Are people comfortable working as a team in the constellation, in the environment they are working? And do they have an identity as a team member saying, this is my role on a team and I am proud to be in this team as, for example, a tester for this product, whatever that is. Team members should have a clear identity and know why they contribute to the team. And uh, for this process, we have quite a number of inputs. For example, the external management, then uh, we would have also things like the composition of the team. Do we have the right people on board in order to succeed? Um, how is the team actually locally distributed? Do they sit in the same office? Do they sit in the same building? Are they in the same city? Are they in the same country? Or maybe not even on the same continent? Uh, what kind of aptitude do they bring in order to succeed on whatever is the team's mission? What kind of personalities do we have? That is, uh, do people get along? Are they open to communicate with each other? Are they somehow a kind of mole that can produce results? together. And maybe there's from the organization said something like SOPs, standard operation procedures, processes that the team needs to follow that constrain their freedom in delivering the results. So those are external factors that do affect the team. Those are internal factors within the team. And of course, what do we want? We want a product. 
and it should have quality. It should be timely and it should accurately Uh, meet the need that is there and it should also of course meet the team's satisfaction of course this feeds back into the attitude of the team so it's not fully linear it's a bit of a cycle in this kind of case and another thing that they have identified is also responsiveness. Those are basically the factors and they are not necessarily complete. They are just examples of what you can say. Okay, this is how we are going to look at the process of our team and what's going to come out. We say if we have problems with the output here, Maybe there's a problem in the process or with the inputs. Preferably we look in the process. What can we fix if everything in the process is fine? Maybe there's an issue on the input side. And if the input side uh, cannot be modified, then the output might be constrained. And this is where we get back to Conway's congestion, saying that um, systems are basically doomed to be the result of the organizational structure that produces them. So we might want to rethink both our input and our process. Okay, that's it for the team process model. Hope you liked and if you like, please leave a like, please leave a comment and subscribe because there's more videos coming up. Enjoy.